Okay, Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. So, this is video for uh, lecture chapter 6, Probimetry Analysis. For this uh, video, uh, we're going to be the part 1 uh, video. So, this uh, chapter, we're going to have several uh, video. So, in this part, mostly I'm going to cover... Uh, your course outline, I want to cover the principle and then uh, for the types you can uh, read by yourself and then and this and also the step in uh, grammatical analysis. So they have six steps uh, regarding on chapter six grammatical analysis for but this uh, first video I'm going to cover step one, step three, step four and step five only. So, Gabriel analysis is the one of the technique uh, which the amount of an analyte, which is usually the ion being analyzed in a sample, can be determined by converting the analyte to some product, which is which change the chemical states from the uh, soluble compound into the an insoluble compound, where the rest of the product can be measured. So, this is the most accurate method of chemical analysis since we just only use analytical balance which is instrument that yield the highly accurate and precise data. So, this is the principles of parametric analysis. So, as I mentioned before, they have six steps in parametric analysis. The first one is preliminary treatment. The second one is precipitation of precipitate. We will go in to discuss further in the next video. And then digestions, filtrations and washing, drying or and igniting weighing and of course the last one is calculations. So this one, two, three, four, five, six and Seven. So, this weighing and calculations, we can uh, compile it into one step. So, weighing and calculation. So, basically, in this video, I'm going to more details on the first part. Uh, the cough, filtration and washing and dry lighting. So, the another step, I will going to discuss later in the next video. Okay. So, so, requirement in grammatical analysis, first we need to identify the insoluble form of analyte and then we need to separate the analyte from the constituents from the mother liquor and then we wash the precipitates free from impurities and then we convert to the uh, stable precipitates and then we weigh it. Okay, this is some of the applications. So, what is the advantages and disadvantages of grammatical analysis? So, this advantages, no calibrations needed, no standardization, re-standardization required. And the result is calculated directly from the experimental data and less messy compared to volumetric analysis. And one, only disadvantages of grammatical analysis is that they are require a very long experimental hour. So, you have two types of, met of method, precipitation and volatilization. So, please read by yourself. If you have any problem regarding these uh, notes, you can ask me in through WhatsApp or through Edmodo classes. So, first we are going to look into the first step in grammatical analysis which is precipitation method. Okay, these precipitation things occur in series of steps which is from the sample solutions and then we added a solution of precipitating reagents or precipitants and then there the precipitate will be formed. Okay, so from this example, silver chloride which is the precipitate that we collect. So this is a process of precipitation method so you can read by yourself first okay okay this is the volatilizer method so you read by yourself first okay now we're going to look back into first step which is primary treatment 
or precipitation. Okay, uh, uh, I'm sorry, preliminary treatment. So, the preliminary treatment is the preparation of the solution that contains the sample. So, from this step, we need to eliminate any interfering materials. So, what is the purpose we uh, treat our sample? First, First, because we need to do the adjustment so that the solution conditions is uh, good for precipitations and then to maintain the low solubility of the precipitates and then to obtain suitable precipitate form for filtration and to get all these three purposes, several factors has been to be considered. So, what is the factor you need to be considered? First, we need to consider the temperature. And then, you need to adjust the sample solution to the necessary pH. Because pH may influence their solubility and also interference from any substance. And then, they have concentration range, the presence of concentration of other constituents and volume of solution during precipitation. So, first we look one by one. Why we need to adjust the pH? Because it influences the solubility of the analytical precipitates. Okay, example here given calcium oxalate precipitation. So, in basic medium, calcium oxalate can be precipitated, which is it insoluble in basic medium. But if you use acidic medium, calcium oxalate precipitate may soluble in the medium. So that's why you cannot get the calcium acidic precipitate if you do in the uh, low pH. Okay, this is the reason because ACD or low pH, okay, the oxalate ion will be react with hydrogen ion to produce weak acid. The weak acid is soluble in the solutions. So it's not good for precipitate. So that's why we need to convert the medium into become basic medium. That's the first one. And the second one is volume of solution during precipitations. Okay, the solution condition must be adjusted to maintain the solubility of precipitates. Okay, because the excess volume of our solution during precipitate. Precipitations may lead to the precipitate will be coagulate. Okay, example, this is the, we maintain the volume into the uh, low solubility of precipitate. So, the precipitate will settle down at the bottom of the solution. But, if we increase the volume to the excess volume, the precipitate bottoms here may be coagulate and become freely free in the solution. So, we do not want this to happen so we must make sure that our volume of solution is maintained to adjust their solubility and the last one is temperature okay by increase the temperature we increase the solubility of precipitate so we need to maintain the temperature in order to make sure that our precipitate not soluble really soluble back to uh, become a solution. Okay, so the precipitate will be dissolved or coagulate, and it will cause us, okay, or the analysis because it's difficult to filter this type of uh, precipitate. Okay, the second one is precipitation, which is a process occur when a portion of the dissolved chemical leave the solution to form solid. So this one we going to continue. I will going to further explain it in the next. Uh, uh, in next video. Okay, so we jump from uh, first step which is preliminary treatment. The second step should be precipitate and then digestion. So we jump these two steps. We're going to look into the uh, fourth step which is filtration and washing first. Okay, so after the precipitate have been taken place, so we need to filter uh, the our precipitate from their supernatal solutions because this solution may contain excess common ion and other constituent any impurities in the solution. So we use filtration technique. So we need to filter using filter paper to collect all the precipitate form. So there has various grade of filter paper. We have grade, uh, grade number 42, 41 and 40. 
So this uh, fitter paper grid uh, for different types of uh, precipitate. Okay, uh, if you use uh, if your precipitate is fine precipitate, so you use paper number forty two. But usually we use now fitter paper number forty because our precipitate usually medium size or in crystalline precipitates. Okay, after we filter, we must wash our required precipitate reagent. Uh, I'm sorry, we may need to wash our precipitate because they may have precipitative reagents or reagents still uh, remain on the surface of our precipitate, uh, uh, precipitate because we add, added in excess. So, since the precipitate form is usually not 100% insoluble, so therefore great care is taken during washing and please do not wash the precipitate too long because you may cause the precipitate to re-precipitate bed, meaning uh, it become soluble bed, bed. So, many precipitate cannot be washed with pure water because of peptization. So, peptization I will going to explain in next video. So the best the best way to wash the precipitate a few times and not to wash once with the total same volume of washing solutions. Okay, why it seems as us if you have one uh, uh, one baldi satu baldi air uh, to mandi. So from either you basu, you ambil satu badan, you jiru satu badan ataupun you jiru uh, sikit-sikit guna cebok. So which one is you uh, prefer? Which one is better? Which one you, you rasa bersih? So of course bila you guna cebok sikit-sikit. So that's why the best way is to wash precipitate a few in times and not in one time. Even though we use the total same number of volume for washing. Okay, so what is the ideal washing liquid? First, no solvent action on precipitate. Dissolve impurities easily, easily to be evaporated at dry temperature. Contain no substance that interfere with the our precipitate, and in generally, pure water is the ideally used. Okay, in this example, you can read by yourself. If you have any problem, you can ask me. And last for this video is drying and ignition. So after we filter, we need to dry our precipitates. So usually we dry by heating at 110 to 120 degrees Celsius for one to two hours. So why we need to dry it? Because we need to remove the solvent, absorb electron, electron light, any washing liquid any water species that carry down with your precipitates and some of precipitate must be ignited to decompose the solid and form a compound of stable and non-composition and this compound we know the composition this compound that we uh, weigh and call as weighing form okay this is weighing and dry precipitate so they have to method to calculate so this calculation i'm going to explain further in our next uh, video so that's all for me so we con uh, we going to see you again in another video thank you